Yes, 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 guys. Welcome back. This is Gerald Peters. I'm the author of You Don't Have to Die Broke. That book is completely free. You can just email me, DM me, text me. It's yours. And uh, The Trading Strategy, The Money Flow Trading System. As you know, I, w I own multiple businesses. One of them is I own a, a large portfolio of single family homes. I'm a real estate investor. I self, I buy them, find them, I fix them, me, uh, you know, people help me. Uh, I rent them and then I manage them. Do this all myself, okay? Um, I don't use real estate agents. I, I don't use much in the way of contractors. I do most of the repairs myself. If you follow me on my story, you'll see me. I'm always working on real estate. In this scenario, I had a family member, and if you're watching, I'm not picking on your decision. It just triggered an idea for a video because I get this question so much. My family member had a home that she owed 50, 000, approximately $50,000 on the home. It was valued at 150,000. Now I'm rounding up, okay? I'm rounding up and down. So she owes 50, she's had a mortgage, and she, it's worth 150. Now if she, she has a couple options, this is how I see it. Option one is to simply sell the home. And you're gonna, she's gonna walk away with, let's say, 100K. Now, some people, sometimes you might look at this and go, okay, well, I could rent it, but if I rent it, I gotta deal with, you know, I gotta deal with renters and all those problems. And to get 100K in rent, I would have to rent it for 10, 12 years. We've estimated the house would rent for about thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars a month. She has a mortgage. The original mortgage was on like a hundred and ten k. So this mortgage is about, let's just say nine hundred dollars for mortgage and taxes. We could rent it for as much as fourteen hundred. In theory, there could be a five hundred dollar cash flow. We know there at least be three hundred. Could be four. Could be five, depending on the marketplace. So if you sold the house, you yes, you could put 100, 100K tax-free, tax-free, there is no taxes on your personal home, right into your pocket, you're out of the deal. Now, how much is the, ta is the 100K appreciating every year? Zero. So you got 100K, but it ain't going nowhere. It's making zero. How much is the house appreciating? 5% a year. 5%, okay? Again, this is an investor thinking out loud. So your 100K is making nothing. Your 150, it's appreciating on the 150, not your 100. What's 5% of 150? See how we did this? So we're looking at what? Uh, what is that? Seven, let's just keep, let's just call it eight. Keep the math simple. The house is making $8,000 a year in appreciation. It's making, let's keep, let's split the middle and say we're getting 400, 400 times 12, that's, let's keep, round it up and say $5,000 in cash flow. So now by keeping the home and just basically renting it, we're appreciating at $8,000 a year, right? 8K a year. We're collecting 5K a year in what? Cash flow, right? We, had, oh, and the loan is still being paid down. So the loan's probably being paid down, what, 3 k a year? I don't know the structure. If it was a 15-year, 20-year, 30-year, I don't know the structure of the loan. But it could be anywhere from 3, maybe 5, if it was a 15-year. I'd probably take this back and refinance it to 15-year, but we'll talk about that. So we got 8 k plus 5 k plus 3 k is 16 k not all in your pocket, on paper, as an investor, by keeping the house and holding it. 16K is what percentage of 100K? 16%. So by keeping the home, renting it, loan pay down, cash flow, property appreciation, you're getting 16% on your 100K, or you can just have the 100K. And then every dollar you spend of this 100, you're going down. Over here, you're not spending shit, you're making money. So your 100 is growing at 16% a year. You see the difference in how an investor would look at this? So an average person would go, yeah, well, I'll get my 100K. That way uh, I get 10 years of rent. I'd look at it and say, no, you're losing out on 16,000 a year. You're not, it's not gonna take you 10 years. It's gonna take you five years, four years. 
once we add appreciation, loan pay down, and cash flow to get this hundred back to actually double it. You get, you get what just happened. Did you just see that math? Now, I rounded. Not perfect math. Okay, we haven't factored in maintenance. I get it, okay? Sorry if I'm out of breath. I've had some sickness. Do you see what just happened? Instead of me taking the 100000 I leave it trapped in this house. And this is not even the best way. I'm just showing a way. So option two, just rent the house as is. We're going to collect. I said we do the, we split the middle. We're going to collect. We're going to make 400 a month cash flow. That's 4,800. I rounded it up to five. I get it. The house is going to appreciate to eight. I rounded that up a little. And then we're going to do 3,000 on the loan pay down. Comes to a total of 16,000. Let's round it down now that we did all that roundup. 15K a year in total earnings instead of taking the 100K. We're going to make 15K a year. How soon until I get my 100 back? Remember they were, they were saying it would take 10 years to get this? No, well, we'll take 12 years. They're not doing investor math. They're not, they're not doing investor math when you think it's going to take you 10 years. You're not doing investor math. You're doing average person math. Okay? Now, let's kick it up a notch. Let's say you're me and you give me a house that only owe 50 on the loan is worth 150, right? That we can rent for 1400. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the bank and say, "Hey, could I get a loan for I don't know, 6, let's go $70,000." What am I doing? I want to take this loan back to the 110. So what is that? 60,000. Let's take it to $60,000. You can close that door. No, no, the inside door. I didn't want to bug you. We take this back to 60000 So they're going to give me $60,000. The bank gives me $60,000. We take the loan back. When we take the loan back, we can take it higher. We could go in there and get seventy-five dollars or $80,000, take the loan up. We're still going to cash flow. We could take it. Look, we could do the reverse math and say, okay, I just need to, I want my mortgage payment to be $1,000 a month with taxes, insurance, property taxes, insurance, and mortgage. That leaves me three to $400 cash flow, 400 on the best side, 300 on the low side. And I get a check for 60 to $70,000, depending on how we structure the loan. So now I keep the house. I've got $75,000. I have a house that's now paying me $2,500 a year in, in cash flow. It's appreciating at $8,000 a year. That's $10,500, right? And we're paying down the new loan at $5,000 or $3,000, depending on how we structure it a year. I'm now making a little bit less return than this one, but I now have a bunch of money and a house. So I'm getting, what, 14 15% on the house, and I've got sixty dollars to 70000 Guess what I could do? I could go buy two more houses. So now, with option three, I've converted this into three houses now. Now I have three houses from the one house. I have three, all paying me 200 a month, all appreciating at 5% a year, all with the loan being paid down. Now how much did my, you're sitting on 100K, I just turned it into $450,000. That's gonna turn it into a million dollars in what? How long? Not long. You see how we did this? That's investor math. So you take your 100K and you park it at the house and you, you buy a new car and you go on a vacation, you get the kids braces and you just make life comfortable. And then I take the 100 and turn it into a million. Investor math. So that's number three. I turn one house into three houses, all producing cash flow. Three other people are paying down the loan. The houses are appreciating. The whole fucking thing is tax free. Okay, do you see how we did that? That's option number three. What's option number four? Option number four, now that maybe we only get two houses over here. Even if it's just two houses, it works great. Option number four is just sell the whole damn thing. Take your 100K, take that 100K and go buy three to four more houses. I don't know your current cash flow. If you have a job and making good money and you didn't need to use every penny of this, I would go buy four more houses. I would just divide this up and I'm looking to put $25,000 down on a house. This is obviously assuming you live in normal areas. You don't need to post, not in California. We all fucking get it, okay? I'm talking about in most places in America, $25,000 down, 
you can get a house, maybe 30. Even if we go 30, you could get three more houses. So you turn one house into three. What do three $150,000 houses appreciate at? A year. So remember we said 8K. We said 8K. 8K times three. 24,000 a year in property appreciation. Now how long does it take for me to get to 25,000? Or the 100K? Remember, remember my family said it was gonna take 12 years to get their 100K back? Not me, it's gonna take me three years. It's gonna take me three years and instead of having 100K in the bank, I'm gonna have three to four houses producing cash flow, appreciating with other people paying down my loan. Fast forward this out 10 years, and oh, by the way, at year five, I'm going to do this game again, and I'm going to buy two or three more, and then on another one, I'm going to buy two or three more, and then on another one, I'm going to buy two or three more. And when your 100000 goes to zero because you just put it in the bank and you spent it, I'm going to be sitting on two or three million dollars. That's how an investor thinks. If your brain didn't go to that, you're not on the millionaire blueprint. You're, you, you're doing what the 93% do, which is just live paycheck to paycheck, get a little money, Stick in the bank. This shit here, this makes anyone rich. I don't care who the fuck you are. If you take this math and understand what I just did here, and you'll understand why I did the eighth day, you say, well, why do you work every day? Because I'm trying to get rich. This gets you rich. Real estate will get you rich. Your job will not. You have to take the money from your job and get it into shit like this that's growing at 16, 20, where you're turning 100 into a million in 10 years because you understand in investor math. That's it, man. God bless.